what, he, what can he do in this moment? It's, yeah, it's starting no, to get it's... a little dicey. I oh, think God. this is it. Oh, trying to the land. Raw! There the it raw is. Man, the man, one man, man. Down the drain. This is the momentum that Thiago has been looking for. Is it going to be able to propel him forward? Look oh, at this. Coming to race, man. This is the situation ah, he wanted. What an actual. What can you oh, my with gosh. That no way. way. And there it is. Patiently waiting for his opportunity to bring it into game three. The Proto Cup tournament finale was amazing, but let's stop and think for a second. How did Thiago manage to pull up that comeback? Now, he was pretty much down for most of the game, and you can tell me it was all Muramasa, and that's mostly right. Muramasa did hit for 1,000 damage with only one ship, which meant other powerful options like Groundman SP were able to get that kill. But let's rewind the clock a little bit. Take a peek. Honoret was in such a good position. The life lead was massive, and he had anti-damage up for defense, plus the beast charge for Tengu is super powerful. However, Thiago was able to leverage the power of Invis by using it twice, and by using Fastgate, he was not only able to dig faster for his powerful chips, but he was also able to squeeze the most advantage out of Invis and its invincibility as possible. This is such a great example of the importance of defense in Battle Network 6 PvP. In my opinion, the Muramasa swing was super important, but we wouldn't have even gotten there if it weren't for the power of defense and invis in particular. So if we stop and think about it, we know that invis and anti-damage and life or and barrier, these are all very great chips. We see them in every single folder, but why exactly are they so great? What happens if we decide to not run any at all? Well, actually I commentated a Japanese tournament about two weeks ago, and in that very event, there were basically no defensive chips allowed whatsoever. If you're curious what happened, it was pretty much this. Wow. Side note, it's actually kind of wild how powerful Super Vulcan is when you don't have to worry about the opponent throwing up a barrier or whatever, but that notwithstanding, I think the biggest takeaway of that tournament was if you were in a losing position, it was basically impossible to claw your way back to a victory. That's how important defensive chips are. In this video, we're going to be covering exactly why that's important and how you can use different types of chips to be able to mount a comeback. So how does one even enter a losing state in the first place? If you think about it, in Battle Network 6, you both start at an equal footing, you and your opponent. Now, it's true that some folders might be inherently stronger or a Navi customizer might be more efficient, but let's not think about that for the minute. It's by using your crosses, by leveraging your movements, and by using powerful chips better than the opponents that one player begins to take an advantage over the other. Now, it's not like that's the end-all be-all. It's very possible for the other player to seize back the control, but if you stop to really think about it, it's not possible for both players to have the advantage you're either at a pretty equal state or one person has got some sort of lead whether it's small or whether it's big a few ways you can tell if a player has the advantage is are you hitting them with a ton of damage, maybe hitting them for a powerful weakness? Or perhaps one player is leaving a lot of chips on the table and wasting them by grabbing four or five chips and not actually using them in the round. Or maybe the opponent is able to use a chip like Life Aura to invalidate two or three chips in a round. That can happen too. It's not always easy to look at just these things because sometimes HP can get in the way. Like for example, it's true that a player who has less HP is closer to dying, but if you look at the initial setups, a lot of powerful builds can run up to 1500 HP, and that doesn't mean that that's inherently weaker than something like a 2600 HP build. In fact, if I went against someone with 2600 HP, that would tell me that they're giving up a lot of equity. Maybe they're not running super armor, or maybe they're not running custom. Just having more HP is not the same thing as winning, and that is actually a really, really important aspect. Just because you're not dying, doesn't mean that you're actually winning. You can have your life aura or all your great defenses, but if your buster stat isn't great and you don't have a lot of good attacks to use with it, then you're not really taking advantage of any sort of situation. So let's talk about defenses. Invis is a very common staple in the Battle Network series. It lasts for about six seconds and it gives you invincibility to most attacks, not all of them. Now that's just an average use of invis to really squeeze the most value out of it. Your one invis should be able to shut down at least one really powerful attack 
and a good way to do that is by using a time freeze counter or a TFC, which we covered in this video right here. Now, the power of Invis changes pretty dramatically depending on the length of the round or therefore the length of the custom gauge. Normally, a round is about 8 seconds long, so Invis is about 3 fourths of that. But imagine a fast gauge which is only 4 seconds long. Now, that 6 second Invis is not only lasting the entire round but also double dipping a little bit into the next one. That means that it's really easy to be fluid with your attacks and you can put your opponent into a really difficult situation where you're constantly recycling your defenses while you your opponent is playing catch up. Now, on the other hand, a slow gauge changes the custom gauge length to be about 17 seconds long. Now it's a lot weaker to have an invis up because your opponent can just wait out the attacks and not have to worry about all of their options being invalidated. On the other hand, we have Life Aura, and you're going to see shortly that it's kind of the opposite of Invis. So, Life Aura shuts down all attacks under 200 damage, which is actually quite a few. You can easily catch an opponent off guard with a Life Aura and ruin their entire set of chips if they're not prepared. Now, Life Aura is balanced by the fact that it's pretty easy to get rid of, and because it's so powerful, every single folder is going to run it, and therefore every folder is going to have an answer to it. You've got Wind Rack, which instantly blows it away with wind chips, and if you're in Falls Our Version, using Tengu Cross can also instantly get rid of Life Aura. Now, if you're in a fast gauge, that means the opponent is going to be able to dig very quickly into their answer and be able to get rid of the Life Aura. Life Aura is best when you're able to surprise the opponent, and if they're on a slow gauge turn where you have maximum time to use your powerful charge attacks, you are going to gain a huge advantage from using it. So, that's why it's the opposite of Invis in that a fast gauge is amazing for Invis, but really bad for Life Aura, and the opposite is true with a slow low gauge. The last of the very common defensive chips is anti-damage, which is going to stop one attack over 10 damage and deal 100 at the opponent. You can see I'm trying so hard to get that double damage rage buff, but it's not working because of anti-damage. My buster shots aren't working, and he can even stack it with a barrier. Because of this stipulation, it's actually kind of hard for the opponent to deal with an anti-damage, especially if they're in a beast mode. If you got no charge shots, you're pretty much going to have to use your actual chip to get rid of that anti-damage damage heaven forbid the opponent uses a time freeze counter to not only stop your attack but also deal some damage and hey that shuriken is actually a sword attack so you can deal double damage and decross a tengu now there is a glaring weakness with anti-damage and that is cursor attacks in battle network 6 all of the trap chips that you set with question marks like anti-sword or whatever are all broken through if they are hit by a cursor attack. That's why machine guns are so popular. Not only are they really hard to dodge, you're doing damage to someone with an anti-damage, you're destroying it, and you're also decrossing dust cross and ground cross. Wow. Now, for whatever reason, the erase cross charge attack is not actually cursor damage. It's the only cross that's like that. I think it's probably because they thought it'd be too easy to penetrate through anti-damage if it were a cursor, but whatever. Now, that being said, Erase Beast and its killer tail does do cursor damage, and it also goes through Invis. Wow, what a powerful attack. And hey, Erase Man himself is the behemoth of a chip he is because he goes through both Invis and Anti-Damage. In fact, he also goes through Shield, so the only way to stop him is with a Barrier Chip. And Barriers are great because they are so good at actually stopping attacks. If you think about anti-damage, one of the weaknesses of it is being able to be hit by a charge attack. Barrier 100 and especially Barrier 200 are not quite in that same camp. They share a weakness with Life Aura, but if you are packing barriers in your build and you have sword chips to punish the opponent, you can really set yourself up for a great situation. I really hate having to deal with barriers myself. Now, if you remember our video on the Navi Customizer and its bugs, you'll remember that you get a particular one for having five or more colors in your Navi Customizer. If you have exactly five, you'll start the battle with a random status condition for about five seconds, and if you have six colors, you'll start the battle off with ten. Now, you're usually getting something like Blinding, which is not very good, but there's a good chance that you'll get Invincibility from Invis, or you'll even get Green Invincibility, which cannot be penetrated whatsoever. It is absolutely difficult for your opponent to deal with one of these things right off the bat. Heaven forbid you combine them with something like a Fast Gauge to really speed up and lengthen the amount of value that you get off of a totally free Invincibility. Now, not every folder can really run this. It requires a very specific Navi Customizer build, but hey, if you like rolling dice, that might be something to keep in mind. 
And on the subject of the Navi Customizer, let me tell you something. As a Falzar player who doesn't run attack because I love to use Hub Batch for my Buster stats, First Barrier is so obnoxious to deal with. You might think that only having 10 damage for that barrier is not much to deal with, but unless you've got a multi-hitting attack or you're willing to go straight into Tengu Cross or even use your Wind Wreck, you're basically going to lose one fully powered attack to the first barrier and first barrier gets an extra bonus in ironically falzer because it's really great at protecting your dust cross in fact a lot of strategies are really reliant on using dust cross and being able to cycle away all their chips to hit something powerful like a bug death thunder or a hub badge both of which are strategies that i love to use and let me tell you fast barrier is very very good for it and look, at the end of the day, if you're in a losing position, you really have two options. You can either perfectly dodge every attack the opponent does, or you can give yourself a buffer that you can then use to launch your offensive comeback. And remember, I said this already, but it's so important. Just because you're using defenses doesn't mean you're actually winning the game unless you have buster stats or powerful chips to back it up. You really want to make sure that you're taking advantage of those brief windows of opportunity when you're invincible to make sure that you can clinch the game. As always, scouts, I can't wait to see us soon. We've got exciting news for it. A no bans patch card tournament at the end of July. Please look forward to hearing more and as always ask us lots of questions i'll see you soon